I've discovered that in life, if you desire a miracle, you must first do whatever you can. If it means planting, then plant. If it involves reading, then read. If it requires change, then change. If it entails studying, then study. If it demands work, then work. Whatever action is necessary, commit to it wholeheartedly. By doing so, you pave your way towards accomplishing the miraculous. One day, Mr. Shaw told Jim, if you aspire to be wealthy and happy, internalize this lesson. Prioritize working on yourself over your job. Since that moment, I've dedicated myself to personal development. I acknowledge that this journey is the most challenging of all endeavors. Personal growth is an ongoing process, lasting a lifetime. What you become is far more important than what you get. The crucial question to ask in the workplace is not, what am I getting? But rather, what am I becoming? Getting and becoming are inseparable, akin to Siamese twins. Your transformation directly impacts your acquisitions. Consider this. Much of what you possess today is a result of becoming the person you are now. I've also observed that income rarely surpasses personal development. Occasionally, income may experience a fortunate surge. But unless you learn to manage the accompanying responsibilities, it typically reverts to a level within your capacity to handle. If someone were to grant you a million dollars, you need to swiftly transform into a millionaire. As a wise individual once remarked, if the world's wealth were evenly distributed, it would eventually return to its original distribution. It's challenging to retain what hasn't been acquired through personal growth. Here's the great axiom of life. To have more than you currently possess, become more than you currently are. This is where you should direct most of your attention. Otherwise, you might find yourself grappling with the axiom of stagnation, which implies that unless you change your current state, you'll always remain where you are. We label such transformations as miracles simply because we don't entirely comprehend their mechanics. Lack of understanding doesn't negate their efficacy. It merely underscores the complexity of their operation. So, how do you initiate a miracle in your life? Number one, start by doing what you can. Compile a list of tasks you've neglected or postponed and begin addressing them. There's no better starting point for personal change that will impact various aspects of your life, including your financial situation, future prospects, and overall well-being. You can't embark on a better life change process than by attending to what you should be doing. Consider this scenario. You may have thought, my mother lives in Florida, and I should have written her six months ago, but I just can't seem to get that letter written. I'm urging you to rectify that situation. Clean up those neglected tasks and don't procrastinate like others do. You might wonder if it's as simple as writing a letter, and the answer is yes. Where else would you start for life change or personal growth? You don't need a miraculous event to kickstart your journey. You don't need elaborate techniques or a thousand-year-old guru. Simply start by taking action on the things within your reach. You don't need any of that stuff. Pass on all that. Kids are afraid of that stuff too much. You'll be out on a limb with Shirley. Don't pass on all that stuff. It's too easy, too simple. It's called take action number one. Neglect errors and discipline. Start setting up some disciplines. If you do that, you'll perform a miracle. Now, the second part of the miracle is to do the best you can. If that's not your philosophy, I would ask you to amend it. Let me give you the best of ancient script. Here's what it says. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might, do it with all your strength, and do it with all your power. What a good philosophy. That kind of philosophy revolutionizes your life. If you haven't picked it up lately, guy slips in late, company doesn't seem to mind, slips out early, first one in the parking lot, heaven for happy hour, stretches his break, comes early for lunch, late back from lunch, company doesn't seem to notice. Guy says, best as I can calculate, I'm putting in about half a day's work and I'm collecting a full day's pay. And the guy says, I got it made. Little does he know the seeds of his own disaster are already being sown by the weakness of his own personal philosophy. It's not the economy that's going to determine your next six years. It's your philosophy about labor and about activity and about miracle and soil and seed and sunshine and rain and the economy and the banks and the money and the companies and the schools and what's going on. It's your philosophy and your attitude and then your ability to take action, all of that. We call the process of life change miracle working. Do what you can, do the best you can. 
Here was number three. Results. Every once in a while, you've got to take a measure. See how you're doing with these three pieces. Philosophy, attitude, activity. Now we take a measure called results. What are the results at the end of the day? The results at the end of the week. You can't let too much time go by without checking. When time goes by six years, I've been out there working. When I met my teacher, Mr. Schiff, he said, well, Mr. Owen, let's just go through a little summary here. He said, in the last six years, how much money have you saved and invested? Let's go through a little tab list here. How much money have you saved and invested in the last six years? I said, what? Zero. He said, you have messed up. You remember these notes? I like that, you messed up, he said. Who sold you on that plan? I thought, my gosh, the man's right. I'm a nice guy. I bought the wrong plan. What if you were 50 and broke, right? Didn't need to change countries, bought the wrong plan. What a sad scenario that would be. But Schiff said these questions. Let's go through some results. He said, how many books have you read in the last 90 days? I said, what? Zero. Wisdom of the world available. Change your life. Change your future. Wisdom of the world available. Develop any skill you want. Earn the kind of income you want. Have all the treasures you want. Equities you want. Relationship with your family that you want. Everything that you want available in the wisdom of the world to help you get it. Haven't read any books in the last 90 days. My teacher said, Mr. Owen, you have messed up. I'm telling you, you've got the deal. Chiff said, Mr. Owen, in the last six months, how many classes have you taken to improve your skills or to develop new skills? Go for the American dream. Become rich and powerful and sophisticated and healthy and influential? How many classes have you taken in the last six months? I said, hi, how many? Zero. He said, you have messed up. Said, you don't need to unmess the country. You don't need to straighten out the perplexed. You don't need to straighten out any of this stuff. All you've got to do is look within and let results teach you a great deal about your own activity, your own attitude, and your own philosophy. I went through that process. Take this phrase home. Results is the name of the game. What other game is there? Results. Here's all life asks us to do. Make measurable progress in reasonable time. Just take home that little phrase. Good phrase. We're asked in life simply to make measurable progress in reasonable time. We demand of our children, how many years do you want your child to spend in fourth grade? Approximately about one, if it looks like. They're not going to make it. We pour on the pressure, call legitimate pressure. Lack of results, peer pressure, family pressure, school pressure, community pressure, every other kind of pressure we can bring to bear. What? You can't stay more than one year in fourth grade. As parents, you'd have to leave the community and say, well, what if they're nice kids? Wouldn't you give them three or four years? The answer is no. You've got to make better progress than that, so you've got to check fairly often. Some things you've got to check every day. Some things you've got to check at least by the end of the week. Salesman joins us, a little sales company, supposed to make 10 calls first week. Wouldn't it be legitimate to call him in on Friday and say, John, how many calls? I mean, this stuff is simple. John says, well, say, John, well, it won't fit in this little box here. Well, now John starts with a story. You say, John, I made this little box so small so a story won't fit. I don't need a story. I need what? A number. What will a number tell me? Everything. John's supposed to make 10 calls. What if he made 20? You say, wow, wow, we got somebody. What if he only made one call? Whoa, will that tell us something about John's philosophy? And the answer is yes. Will it tell us something about his attitude? Of course. Will it tell us something about his disciplines? Of course. And if he wants a lesson in life change, all he has to do is be willing to face the numbers and come up with the results. That will teach you to either celebrate if you got good results or fix whatever needs to be fixed in your philosophy, attitude, activity, called disciplines. Success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. The next one, miracle, comes from your attitude. Having the right attitude is everything. How we feel plays such a major part in our future. First, it's how you feel about the past. You need a healthy attitude about the past so that you use it, not live in it, but use it, not carry it like a burden. 
that let the wise lessons you learned from the past now serve as fuel to furnish the future. Next, a good attitude about the future. You've got to set your goals. We look back for experience, but we look forward for inspiration. We must be instructed and inspired. No better inspiration than to set your goals. I started this process when I was 25, literally rocked my world, changed my life. I had no idea it was so simple. Here's how simple it is. Decide what you want, write it all down. Make a list of the people you want to meet. Make a list of the books you want to read. Make a list of the classes you want to take. Make a list of the skills you want to learn. Make a list of the cities you want to visit. Make a list of the investments you want to have. Just make these lists. Start checking them off. Put a lot of little things on your list so you can start checking off something right away. That's part of the fun. Here's what's next. If you check off something major, celebrate, because that inspires you to make a longer list of goals and put everything on your list. Little things insignificant to someone else, important to you. I put a little revenge on my first list. My mentor said it was healthy. Some of the people who said I couldn't succeed, kids from the farms of Idaho, they went on my list. Couldn't wait to get my new car. Drive it up on their lawn. Say, oh, pardon me. Here's the money to have it fixed. Just a little satisfaction. My Japanese friend, Toro Ikada, in San Jose, put on his first list a Caucasian gardener. Way back then, everybody had a Japanese gardener. Everybody. Japanese gardener said, I'm Japanese. I'm going to have a Caucasian gardener. Okay, a little satisfaction, right? Set your goals, decide what you want, write it down, start checking them off. It's powerful stuff. Next, it's how you feel about everybody. If you want to be a leader, a true leader, entrepreneur of the highest order, well-respected, unique in your field, here's one. How you feel about everybody. And this is philosophical as well. You cannot succeed by yourself. So, a unique sense of appreciation of everybody goes with the territory of leadership. It takes everybody for each of us to be successful. One person doesn't make an economy, one person doesn't make a symphony orchestra. It takes everybody. For this gathering today, all of you had to be here to make this gathering. Everybody. If one of you were missing, there wouldn't be this many people here. Everybody to make something work, for the office, whatever the enterprise, takes everybody. The gift of America, but it's everybody who came over the last two to three hundred years, bringing with them their gifts. No country has become such a depository of the gifts of the world like America has over the last two to three hundred years. People coming, bringing their gifts. Gift of language, gift of learning, gift of politics, gift of government, gift of medicine, gift of healing, gift of music, gift of the work ethic. All this came in steady streams from all over the world, making us unusual because of the gifts that were brought. And to understand that and appreciate it now gives you open access to the market that's available to make your fortune. Now, what I love to do is go back where these gifts came from. Not long ago, I was in Rome. I had a thousand people in my class. Someone suggested, Jim Ron loves the music of Andrea Bocelli, the blind opera singer from Italy. So, when they introduced me, I walked to the podium, and all 1,000 of these Italians stood up and sang for me one of Andrea Bocelli's songs in true Italian style. Here, as I described it to my grandchildren later, I said, here was the scene, a choir of 1,000 and an audience of one. And that was me. I thought, here's where some of these gifts came, the gift of poetry. So, all learn to appreciate the gifts. Now, the last attitude is how you feel about yourself. Nothing more powerful than self-esteem, which creates self-confidence. The greatest steps towards success come from self-confidence, and that comes from self-esteem. Doing what you know you should so that at the end of the day, you have high, high self-esteem. Last but not least, your equity. Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. God says, now I'm an amateur on God, but here's my best analysis. God says, if you'll plant the seed, I'll make the tree. Now, that's a good arrangement. Number one gives God the tough end of the deal. What if you had to make the tree? That'd keep you up late night trying to figure out how to make a tree. Say no, I'm telling you. 
The mystery and the miracle of this stuff has already been set up. God says, I got the miracle going. I got the seasons going. I got some sunshine and some rain. And I'm God. But, but the way I've arranged that, I just need somebody to plant the seed. Not chant in California. They're trying to chant. Get this stuff done. Forget this California stuff. You don't have to rub a crystal and sleep under a pyramid. Stuff's too easy. Getting rich is too easy. Changing your life is too easy. Forget all that, right? Massive bombard affirmation. Forget all that. My opinion, ocean waves and seagulls, come on. This stuff's too simple. Just simple, easy stuff. But if you neglect it, that's how it piles up year after year. But if you're willing to straighten it out, and here's one of the keys, it's called activity. It's called disciplines, turning wisdom from your philosophy and inspiration, the strengthening of attitude and faith and courage, commitment and all this stuff that comes from attitude. If you're willing to take these two qualities, philosophy and attitude, and invest it into activity, you can have a miracle. Anything short of that, no miracle. Wisdom doesn't perform a miracle. Attitude doesn't perform a miracle. The only thing that performs a miracle of increase is called equity. It's called putting wisdom and attitude into discipline, into labor. And this labor now can perform a miracle. And here, here's the two parts to the labor. One, do what you can. Number two, do the best you can. Can't give you better advice than that. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to impart the timeless principles that lead to greatness. Today, I stand before you to ignite the fire of ambition, the pursuit of excellence, and the power to cultivate a successful mindset within each of you. So, grasp hold of your dreams and ambitions, for today marks the beginning of a journey toward achieving greatness. Firstly, let's understand that success is not merely about material wealth or outer achievements. It begins within the confines of our minds. A successful mindset is the cornerstone upon which all greatness is built. It serves as the blueprint that shapes our actions, attitudes, and ultimately, our destinies. Imagine your mind as a fertile garden. What you plant within it determines the fruits it bears. To sow the seeds of greatness, you must cultivate a mindset that thrives on positivity, resilience, and continuous growth. The seeds of greatness require nurturing, constant care, and unwavering dedication. The first key to building a successful mindset is clarity of purpose. Define your dreams with absolute precision. Know what you desire, why you desire it, and commit yourself wholeheartedly to its pursuit. Clarity provides direction, transforming vague aspirations into tangible goals. Next, self-discipline is the fuel that propels you toward your aspirations. It's the ability to persistently take action even when the path seems arduous or when motivation wanes. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments and its mastery is pivotal in sculpting a successful mindset. In your journey towards greatness, embrace continuous learning. Strive to expand your knowledge, challenge your beliefs, and evolve into a better version of yourself each day. A mind that hungers for wisdom paves the way for unparalleled success. Remember, resilience is the hallmark of champions. Setbacks are inevitable, but it's your response to them that determines your destiny. Use failures as stepping stones, learn from them, and let them fortify your resolve to push forward. Moreover, surround yourself with excellence. Your environment significantly influences your mindset. Associate with individuals who inspire, challenge, and uplift you. Build a network of like-minded individuals who support your aspirations and encourage your growth. Another crucial aspect is gratitude. Cultivate an attitude of gratitude for the journey, the lessons learned, and the opportunities that come your way. Gratitude amplifies positivity and attracts more reasons to be thankful, fostering a mindset of abundance and fulfillment. Furthermore, embrace adaptability. The world is ever-changing, and the ability to adapt is vital for success. Be open to new ideas, innovations, and strategies. Flexibility ensures that you remain resilient in the face of adversity and adaptable in seizing emerging opportunities. Understand that action is the catalyst for transformation. Dreams without action are mere fantasies. Break your goals into actionable steps and take consistent, purposeful action towards their realization. It's through action that dreams are turned into reality. Lastly, celebrate milestones but stay hungry. 
Acknowledge your achievements, both big and small, as markers of progress. Yet never become complacent. Maintain an insatiable hunger for growth and excellence that propels you beyond your comfort zone. Now, let's delve into the correlation between a successful mindset and the attainment of wealth. One must grasp the fundamental truth that success is not merely a product of chance or luck. It is the offspring of a cultivated mindset, meticulously crafted with discipline, resilience, and an insatiable thirst for growth. Consider this. Wealth is not solely measured by material possessions or financial abundance. True wealth emanates from a mindset that embraces abundance in all facets of life. It is the culmination of a mindset rich in positivity, vision, and unwavering determination. The journey towards wealth and success begins with the inception of a mindset rooted in unwavering belief, in oneself, in one's dreams, and in the boundless possibilities that exist within our grasp. Picture this. A mind akin to a fertile garden where the seeds of ambition and perseverance are sown with nurturing care and unwavering determination. These seeds sprout into the lush tapestry of success. In the realm of the mind, thoughts wield unparalleled power. They are the architects of our destiny, shaping our actions and guiding our journey. Therefore, it is paramount to fuel your mind with thoughts of success, abundance, and unwavering determination. A successful mindset thrives on the principles of continuous learning and growth. It embraces challenges as stepping stones towards greatness. Every setback is a lesson, every failure a catalyst for growth. It is through these experiences that the fabric of resilience is woven, a resilience that fortifies the mind against adversity and propels one closer to the pinnacle of success. Wealth is not an elusive dream reserved for a select few. It is a destination within reach for those who dare to forge a mindset of abundance. A mindset that transcends limitations and envisions a reality steeped in prosperity. As you embark on the noble quest to build a successful mindset, remember this. Success is not a destination but a journey. A journey sculpted by the thoughts we harbor, the actions we take, and the unwavering belief in our ability to manifest our dreams. In closing, I urge you to harness the immense power within, the power of your mind. Nurture it with positivity, feed it with unwavering determination, and watch as it orchestrates the symphony of your success. Embrace the journey towards building a successful mindset, for within its realm lies the key to unlocking the boundless treasures of wealth and prosperity. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to delve into a cornerstone of success that has guided great leaders, entrepreneurs, and visionaries throughout history, the profound art of effective decision-making. I'm here to tell you that your decisions are the keystones that shape your destiny. They are the building blocks of your future, the architects of your success, and the compass guiding you through life's vast ocean of possibilities. Let me emphasize this fundamental truth. The decisions you make determine the life you lead. Each choice, whether big or small, carries with it the power to propel you forward or hold you back. It's not just about making decisions, it's about making the right decisions. The choices you make today will ripple through time, impacting your tomorrows in ways you can't even fathom. Imagine standing at a crossroads. To the left, a path paved with comfort and familiarity but lacking growth and opportunity. To the right, an unknown trail filled with challenges and uncertainties yet brimming with endless possibilities. Which path will you choose? The answer lies in your decision-making prowess. Effective decision-making isn't about avoiding mistakes, it's about learning from them. Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Embrace failures as stepping stones toward success. Each misstep is an invaluable lesson offering insights that propel you closer to your goals. Don't let the fear of making mistakes paralyze you. Instead, let it motivate you to take calculated risks and explore uncharted territory. One of the critical elements of making effective decisions is clarity. Define your goals and values with utmost precision. When your vision is crystal clear, decisions become simpler. They align effortlessly with your aspirations leading you on a direct path toward your desired destination. Another crucial aspect is informed decision-making. Gather knowledge, seek advice from mentors, study past experiences, and analyze potential outcomes. 
The more informed you are, the better equipped you'll be to make choices that yield favorable results. Remember, knowledge is not just power, it's the ammunition you need in the battlefield of decisions. Moreover, don't underestimate the power of intuition. Often, your gut feeling is a culmination of your subconscious mind processing vast amounts of information. It's a whisper guiding you towards the right direction. Learn to trust your instincts while making decisions, especially when logic fails to provide a clear answer. Furthermore, timing plays a pivotal role in decision making. There's a saying, the early bird catches the worm. Sometimes, delaying a decision can be as detrimental as making a wrong one. Assess the situation but don't linger in perpetual analysis. Make decisions promptly and decisively when the time is right. Let's talk about the impact of decisions on your habits. Your decisions shape your habits, and your habits shape your life. Choose wisely. Develop habits that align with your goals and values. Consistency in making positive decisions breeds habits that elevate you towards success. However, it's crucial to understand that not making a decision is also a decision. A decision to let circumstances control you instead of taking charge of your life. Procrastination, indecisiveness, and avoidance are the enemies of progress. Don't let them dictate your future. Take ownership of your decisions, for they are the seeds from which your destiny blossoms in the grand tapestry of life. The quality of your decisions determines the richness of your experiences. The path to success is not always smooth. It's filled with twists, turns, and unforeseen challenges. But those who master the art of effective decision-making navigate through these challenges with grace and resilience. Remember, your decisions are not isolated events. They're interconnected threads weaving the story of your life. Embrace this power. Embrace the responsibility. Your decisions are the sculpture's tools shaping the masterpiece of your destiny. Understand this. Wealth is not merely a product of luck or chance. It is a consequence of the decisions we make consistently over time. Each decision is a stepping stone, either leading us closer to prosperity or farther away from it. What distinguishes the successful from the rest isn't merely the number of decisions made but rather the quality and effectiveness of those decisions. The ability to discern between what is right and what is easy, what is fruitful and what is wasteful, is the hallmark of a great decision maker. Consider this analogy. The life we led is akin to sailing a ship across the vast ocean of opportunity. Our decisions serve as the wind in our sails, the direction we choose, the adjustments we make in response to the changing winds, and the steadfastness with which we steer our ship. These determine whether we arrive at the shores of wealth and abundance or get lost in the sea of mediocrity. Let me share with you the essential principles that underscore the connection between effective decision-making and the attainment of wealth. 1. Clarity of vision. Wealth is not a vague concept, it's a destination. We must visualize it. Effective decision-makers possess a clear vision of their goals. They know what they want and chart their course accordingly. Without a defined destination, any path will lead nowhere. 2. Courageous commitment. The road to wealth is rarely smooth and obstacles are aplenty. However, effective decision-makers are unwavering in their commitment. They have the courage to stand by their choices, especially in the face of adversity. 3. Information is key. Making informed decisions is crucial. Seek knowledge, gather information, and analyze the available data. The more informed your decisions, the more likely they are to lead you toward wealth. 4. Timeliness and decisiveness. Procrastination is the thief of opportunity. Effective decision makers understand the value of time and act decisively. They don't dwell endlessly in the realm of indecision. They make choices promptly and purposefully. 5. Embrace risk and learn from failure. Every decision carries an inherent risk. Wealth is often on the other side of calculated risks. Failure is not an endpoint but a stepping stone toward success. Learn from your mistakes, adapt, and move forward with newfound wisdom. 6. Surround yourself with the right people. Your network influences your decisions. Associate with those who uplift and inspire you. Seek counsel from mentors and peers who have trodden the path toward wealth and success. 7. Adaptability and flexibility. Circumstances change, and so must our decisions. Effective decision-makers are adaptable. 
They are not rigid, but rather flexible in their approach, willing to adjust their strategies to align with evolving situations. Remember, wealth isn't merely confined to monetary abundance. It encompasses richness in relationships, health, wisdom, and experiences. The decisions we make influence not only our financial standing, but also our overall well-being. In closing, the road to wealth is paved with decisions, small and large, intricate and straightforward. Each decision we make is a stitch in the fabric of our destiny. Therefore, I implore you to deliberate wisely, act courageously and persistently steer your ship toward the shores of prosperity. May your decisions be the catalysts that propel you toward the life of abundance you rightfully deserve. Thank you. There's a peculiar yet insidious mindset that can infiltrate even the most promising souls. A mindset that gnaws at the very core of your potential. A mindset that is as toxic as it is subtle. Poverty thinking. Poverty thinking is not just about the lack of money. It is a state of mind that cripples your ambitions, diminishes your dreams, and robs you of the greatness you were born to achieve. It's not merely a reflection of your bank balance. It's a reflection of your beliefs, attitudes, and expectations. It's a mindset that believes in scarcity over abundance, in limitations over possibilities, and in fate over self-determination. It shackles you to your past, blinds you to opportunities, and convinces you that your dreams are nothing but illusions. But here's the truth, my friends. Poverty thinking robs your future outcomes because it robs you of your belief in yourself. It convinces you that you are not worthy of success, that your dreams are too big, and that you are destined to live a life of mediocrity. It fills your mind with self-doubt, extinguishes your passion, and suffocates your potential. Your thoughts are incredibly powerful. They shape your beliefs, which in turn influence your actions, and your actions determine your outcomes. If you constantly dwell on thoughts of lack, limitation, and fear, you will inevitably create a reality that mirrors those thoughts. Your beliefs become self-fulfilling prophecies, and poverty thinking becomes a self-imposed prison from which it is difficult to escape. But there is hope. There is a way out of this mental and emotional prison. It starts with a shift in your thinking. A shift from scarcity to abundance, from fear to courage, and from self-doubt to self-belief. Recognize that your past does not define your future, and your current circumstances do not determine your potential. Decide today to break free from the chains of poverty thinking. Embrace a mindset of abundance. Believe in the boundless opportunities that life has to offer. Understand that the universe is abundant and there is more than enough for everyone. Your success does not diminish someone else's. In fact, your success can inspire and uplift others to achieve their greatness too. Believe in your dreams, no matter how big or audacious they may seem. Develop a burning desire for success. Let that desire fuel your actions and drive you to overcome any obstacle in your path. Surround yourself with positive, empowering people who believe in your potential. Avoid the naysayers and skeptics who try to pull you down into their negativity. Invest in your personal development. Your mind is like a muscle. The more you train it, the stronger it becomes. Take massive action towards your goals. Break down your goals into actionable steps and consistently work towards them. Success is not a one-time event. It's the result of daily habits and choices. And most importantly, believe in yourself. Believe that you are capable of achieving greatness. Believe that you have the power to create the life you desire. Your belief in yourself is the foundation upon which your success is built. Cultivate unwavering self-confidence and let it propel you to heights you never thought possible. Poverty thinking is a choice, and so is abundance thinking. The choice is yours to make. Choose abundance, choose belief, choose courage, choose action. Choose to create a future that is worthy of your greatness. I believe in you, and I know that you have the potential to achieve extraordinary things. The world is waiting for your brilliance, your creativity, and your unique gifts. Do not let poverty thinking rob you of your future. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a privilege to stand before you today in this beautiful gathering to share with you my thoughts on a subject of paramount significance, the disciplined mind and the power of self-awareness. Today, I want to ignite within you a flame of understanding to awaken your consciousness and guide you towards personal development. Let us embark on a journey, one that will open the doors to infinite possibilities, 
unleash your true potential, and enable you to live life on your terms. The human mind is a remarkable gift, but it can also be your greatest obstacle. Understanding the significance of self-awareness is the key to unlocking the vast potential within you, leading you towards growth, success, and fulfillment. Author and philosopher Marcus Aurelius once said, the first rule is to keep an untroubled spirit. The second is to look things in the face and know them for what they are. These words carry profound wisdom that holds true even today. In our fast-paced world, it is more crucial than ever to cultivate a disciplined mind, one that is aware not only of the external world but also of our innermost thoughts, emotions, and desires. Self-awareness is the bedrock upon which personal development is built. It is the ability to perceive and understand oneself, to recognize the strengths and weaknesses that define us, and to navigate our thoughts and actions with clarity and purpose. When we have a disciplined mind rooted in self-awareness, we gain the power to shape our destiny rather than being at the mercy of circumstance. The first step to becoming self-aware is to cultivate mindfulness, the practice of being fully present in the moment, consciously observing our thoughts and emotions without judgment. Mindfulness allows us to become attuned to the subtle nuances of our minds, to recognize recurring patterns, and to understand the impact they have on our lives. It enables us to detach ourselves from the chaotic whirlwind of thoughts and emotions, offering us the space to respond rather than react impulsively. But do not mistake self-awareness for self-criticism or self-judgment. It is not about dwelling on our flaws or shortcomings. Instead, it is about embracing our unique strengths and areas for growth. Self-awareness empowers us to harness our strengths, maximize their potential, and work diligently towards improving our weaknesses. It is a process of constant refinement, but one that ultimately leads to personal and professional transformation. In recognizing our purpose, our why, we develop a grounded sense of self-awareness that provides direction and inspiration in our daily lives. Our purpose creates a compelling vision that drives us forward, fueling our actions and motivating us to overcome obstacles with unwavering determination. To uncover our purpose, we must delve deeper, questioning our values, passions, and deepest desires. What fills your soul with joy? What ignites a fire within you? What legacy do you hope to leave behind? These profound questions allow us to awaken the dormant potential within, to discover our unique purpose and to live a life aligned with our authentic selves. The disciplined mind, fortified with self-awareness, is a force capable of overcoming any challenges that may come our way. It allows us to adapt to change, to transform setbacks into stepping stones, and to rise above the struggles that attempt to derail us. With a disciplined mind, we can navigate the turbulent tides of life with grace and resilience, emerging stronger and wiser from every test of our character. Self-awareness also nurtures our relationships, both personal and professional. It allows us to understand the perspectives of others, to empathize with their struggles, and to communicate effectively. By cultivating self-awareness, we create a ripple effect that positively impacts those around us, fostering trust, collaboration, and a shared sense of purpose. In the pursuit of personal development, it is vital to remember that growth is not a solitary endeavor. It thrives in an environment of connection, support, and mentorship. Seek out individuals who have walked the path before you, those who embody the qualities you aspire to cultivate within yourself. Embrace their teachings, draw from their wisdom, and allow their guidance to shape your journey towards self-awareness and personal growth. As we stand on the precipice of personal development, ready to embark on an extraordinary journey, let us remember that self-awareness is the cornerstone of progress. It empowers us with the ability to harness our strengths, to cultivate resilience, to uncover our purpose, and to navigate life's challenges with clarity and grace. We are all endowed with incredible potential, the capacity to achieve greatness and create a fulfilling life. However, too often, we find ourselves trapped and hindered by our own self-imposed limitations, beliefs rooted in fear, doubt, and negative conditioning. These shackles hold us back from unlocking our true potential, from pursuing our dreams, and from living the life we truly desire. But my friends, I stand before you today to tell you that these self-limiting beliefs are nothing more than illusions. They are figments of our imagination, created by our own fears and insecurities. 
And just as we have created them, so too can we break free from them with the power of a disciplined mind. So, what is the disciplined mind? And how can it help us triumph over these self-imposed limitations? A disciplined mind is a stronghold of focus, determination, and resilience. It is a fortress that enables us to conquer our doubts, fears, and self-limiting beliefs. It is the key to unlocking our true potential, our gateway to personal growth and self-transformation. But let me be clear, my friends, developing a disciplined mind is not an easy task. It requires effort, dedication, and a willingness to challenge our own beliefs and comfort zones. However, the rewards that await us on the other side are immeasurable. The journey towards a disciplined mind begins with self-awareness. We must first identify and acknowledge the self-limiting beliefs that hold us back. These beliefs may have been ingrained in us from a young age or developed over time due to setbacks and failures. But remember this, my friends. Failure is not a reflection of our potential. It is merely a stepping stone towards success. Once we have identified these self-limiting beliefs, we must challenge them. We must question their validity and examine the evidence that supports or refutes them. Often, we will find that these beliefs are based on false assumptions or distorted perceptions of ourselves and the world around us. It is essential to surround ourselves with positivity and inspiration. We become the average of the people we spend the most time with, so let us choose wisely. Seek out individuals who have overcome their own self-limiting beliefs and achieved greatness in their fields. Learn from their experiences, draw inspiration from their stories, and let success fuel your own pursuit of greatness. Remember, my friends, success leaves clues. Now, with a disciplined mind, we can begin the arduous task of replacing our self-limiting beliefs with empowering ones. This process requires consistency and repetition. We must consciously rewire our minds by affirming positive beliefs and repeating empowering statements. These affirmations serve as reminders of our potential and our ability to achieve greatness even in the face of adversity. But let me warn you, my friends, this journey towards a disciplined mind will be met with resistance. Our old habits, fears, and doubts will claw at us, desperately trying to maintain their grip on our minds. But we must not waver. We must cultivate unwavering determination and resilience, for it is through this resistance that true growth and transformation occur. As we embark on this journey, it is important to remember that the disciplined mind extends beyond personal growth. It permeates all areas of our lives, from our relationships to our careers and everything in between. It is the foundation upon which we build a life of purpose, fulfillment, and achievement. How many of you believe that we are all born with a finite amount of potential? Raise your hands if you think so. Now, let me assure you, there is no judgment here. But I want to challenge this belief today. I firmly believe that each one of us possesses an infinite well of potential waiting to be unleashed. However, the key to unlocking this potential lies in our mindset, our philosophy towards growth and self-improvement. You see, my friends, a growth mindset is the belief that our abilities can be developed and improved through dedication, hard work, and perseverance. It is the understanding that our intelligence, talent, and abilities are not fixed traits but rather malleable attributes that can be nurtured and expanded. Have you ever wondered why some individuals seem to effortlessly grasp new skills or swiftly recover from failures, while others remain stagnant or crumble under pressure? It all comes down to their perspective, their mindset. Those who foster a growth mindset embrace challenges, view failures as opportunities to learn, and persist in the face of obstacles. Now, let me share a story with you. A tale of two individuals each on their distinct paths towards self-improvement. Sarah and John both aspired to overcome their present circumstances and create a better life for themselves. However, their approaches differed vastly. Sarah began by cultivating a growth mindset. She immersed herself in books, attended seminars, and sought out mentors who would nurture her passion for personal development. Sarah firmly believed that her abilities were not set in stone, that her capabilities were not determined at birth. She saw every challenge as an opportunity for growth, every setback as a lesson to be learned. Sarah embraced the discomfort of leaving her comfort zone, knowing that true growth occurs only when we dare to venture into the unknown. 
On the other hand, John possessed a fixed mindset. He was resigned to the belief that his talents were limited, that his intelligence was stagnant. John shied away from challenges and took failures as a reflection of his inherent deficiencies. Instead of seeking growth, he sought comfort, avoiding situations that might expose his weaknesses. John's self-imposed limitations shackled him, preventing him from unlocking his true potential. Fast forward five years, and what a stark contrast we witness. Sarah, armed with her growth mindset, had grown leaps and bounds. She devoured knowledge, developed key skills, and joined a community of like-minded individuals. Her confidence soared as she saw her progress, and she discovered an unshakable passion for inspiring others to follow a similar path of personal growth. Meanwhile, John stayed stagnant, confined within the prison walls of his fixed mindset. By refusing to embrace change and adapt, his potential withered away, leaving him disillusioned and disheartened. John, like many others trapped in a fixed mindset, became a spectator of his own life, watching as others around him achieved greatness. This juxtaposition of Sarah and John's journeys demonstrates that developing a growth mindset is not a fleeting whim but rather a lifelong commitment. It is a continuous effort to challenge our limitations, to push past our comfort zones, and to persist even when faced with adversity. So, my friends, how can we cultivate a growth mindset within ourselves? While there is no one-size-fits-all approach, there are several fundamental principles that we can apply to our lives. Firstly, we must embrace challenges. Challenges are not barriers but rather stepping stones on the path to growth. They offer us the opportunity to expand our abilities, broaden our perspective, and become a better version of ourselves. Remember, it is only by surmounting challenges that we can experience personal growth. Secondly, let us embrace failures. Failure is not something to be feared, it is a catalyst for growth. Each failure provides valuable feedback, highlighting areas where we need to improve. Let us shift our perspective and see failure as an opportunity to learn and refine our approach. Embrace the lessons failure offers, for they are the stepping stones toward success. Thirdly, perseverance is key. The path to success is littered with obstacles, but those with a growth mindset persevere. They understand that setbacks are temporary and that success comes to those who continue to forge ahead undeterred by temporary defeats. Embrace a never-give-up attitude and persist through challenges, for it is in the face of adversity that our true character is revealed. Lastly, surround yourself with positivity. Seek out mentors who inspire you, engage in communities that foster personal growth, and rid yourself of negative influences. These positive influences will propel your growth journey, providing the support and inspiration needed to overcome obstacles. They say that the mind is a powerful instrument capable of shaping one's destiny. It is in the realm of our thoughts where dreams are kindled, possibilities are explored, and the foundation for a life of fulfillment is built. But, my friends, a disciplined mind goes beyond simply acknowledging the power of our thoughts. It empowers us to harness that power and steer it towards our goals. Let me paint a picture for you. Imagine a ship without a navigator, sailing aimlessly in the vast ocean. No matter how majestic that vessel may be, it is nothing but an empty shell driven by the whims of the winds and currents. Similarly, a mind without discipline is like a compass without a true north, no direction, no purpose, and ultimately no destination. So, how do we cultivate a disciplined mind? How do we develop the unwavering focus and consistency that lead us towards our goals? It all begins with our habits. Habits are the building blocks of our lives. They are the small decisions we make every day, the actions we take with little thought. And make no mistake, whether they are positive or negative, our habits shape our destiny. They can either be the stepping stones towards greatness or the stumbling blocks on our path to success. To develop a disciplined mind, we must first take inventory of our current habits. Are they aligned with our goals? Do they serve our higher purpose? Once we identify those habits that are incongruent with our aspirations, we must summon the courage and willpower to replace them with new, empowering habits. But, my friends, change is not an easy task. It requires commitment, consistency, and a steadfast belief in our ability to transform ourselves. It is said that motivation gets us started, 
but it is discipline that keeps us going. So, let us explore some strategies to maintain focus and consistency on this transformative journey. First and foremost, we must set clear and concise goals. In the grand tapestry of life, our goals are like beacons of light, guiding us through the darkest of nights. Without clear goals, we stumble in the darkness, losing our way and succumbing to distractions. Define what you want with utmost clarity, for a clear target is much easier to hit. Once our goals are set, we must create an environment that supports our quest for discipline. Surround yourself with individuals who share your ambition and drive towards personal development. Seek guidance from mentors who have walked the path before you and have achieved the success you desire. Remember, the company we keep has a profound impact on our thoughts and actions. Choose wisely. Next, we must guard our minds fiercely. In this age of information overload, distractions lurk at every corner, vying for our attention. Social media, the constant buzz of notifications, and the seductive allure of instant gratification can pull us away from our purpose and render our aspirations futile. Protect your mind from these distractions and set boundaries to safeguard your focus. In addition to guarding our minds, we must also nourish them with inspiring and uplifting material. Just as we feed our bodies with wholesome food to fuel our physical energies, our minds deserve the nourishment of positive thoughts, empowering literature, and motivational content. Surround yourself with books, podcasts, and speeches that align with your goals and ignite the flames of passion within you. Moreover, my friends, consistency is the key that unlocks the door to success. Take a moment to reflect on the most significant achievements in your life. Were they the result of sporadic bursts of effort or consistent, disciplined action? Rarely does success bestow its blessings upon those who dabble half-heartedly in their pursuits. It is the consistent and disciplined minds that triumph over adversity and taste the sweetness of victory. To maintain consistency, we must cultivate the habit of self-discipline. It is said that self-discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. It is the unwavering voice within us that whispers, stay on course, even when the storms of life rage around us. Train your mind to embrace discomfort, for it is through these challenges that true growth unfolds. Delay gratification, resist the allure of instant pleasures, and remain committed to the long game. Lastly, my friends, I urge you to understand that failure is an inherent part of our journey towards success. The path to greatness is not a smooth one. It is riddled with hurdles, setbacks, and moments of doubt. But remember, failure is not fatal. It is merely feedback, guiding us towards a better approach. Embrace failure as a teacher, for it holds the lessons that will shape your resilience and fortify your disciplined mind. Let us build disciplined minds so that we may lead lives of significance. Thank you.